of a warp speed uh, run through of research that I've done. And interestingly enough, I presented this very slideshow at um, the Materials Research Society conference that's taking place virtually um, this week. I presented this yesterday um, to a small group of people, which was very exciting to do and, and very, um, a, a very interesting um, experience for me. So, and that was already a, a distilled version of the research. So this is really just gonna be something, something fast, but I'm very excited to talk about it. So as Ari mentioned, um, I deal with computational modeling of uh, doped semiconducting polymers. And so what that means, well, before I get into that, let me first explain one of the many applications of semiconducting polymers that I'm gonna talk more technically about um, what we studied and then the computational results that we got from that and the conclusions we were able to draw in conjunction with the experimental group that we collaborated with. Um, so of the various and sundry applications that organic semiconductors have, um, thermoelectric materials are one of those. Um, and in short, a thermoelectric material is one that can convert a thermal gradient to an electric potential or vice versa. Um, it utilizes these three principles, the Seebeck effect, Thompson effect, and Peltier effect, which are all comprised in this idea of the thermoelectric effect. So basically, if you imagine a temperature gradient, so a, a hot surface and, and a cold surface, that there's gonna be heat flow between the two, well, these materials can convert that into electric potential or electron, electric energy. Um, one benefit of studying polymer-based devices uh, in this field is that they are flexible, printable, and solution processable. So um, if you imagine basically a material that you can fold and bend and shape um, however you want, that's an incredibly uh, advantageous aspect of these types of materials. Um, and again, they convert waste heat into electricity. So one kind of pie in the sky um, ideal I have, and, and what makes it particularly exciting to work on this type of research is you can imagine a fitness tracker for example, like a, like a, just an arbitrary, I mean, Fitbit, I'm not sponsored or anything, but I, I just wear one. <laughs> um, imagine that uh, not needing a battery and that it could charge between, charge uh, due to the temperature difference between your skin and the ambient atmosphere. So that's kind of a long-term goal, but it, I think it's exciting to think about um, with more efficiency, we could potentially be there one day. And so with these doped polymers, there's a few uh, terms I need to introduce before I get into the research itself. Basically, in short, we form a dopant, which has the technical term of a Meisenheimer complex, which just means that there's two species, the Lewis base in this case, and the oligomer, which have a dative bond. So it's not as strong as a covalent or an ionic bond, but it is still a, an electron or a, a potential energy well um, that the two species are feeling the presence of one another such that they're in fixed positions. This is then used to, to dope a polymer, which improves the electronic activity, um, thus making it a semiconductor. So to skip kind of uh, around, on the left side, we have uh, quantifications of thermoelectric material performance. Um, in the middle, we have the species that we're talking about. But most importantly for, for this presentation, I suppose, is looking at the top right of the screen here, we have the pristine polymer packing system. So polymers are long chains of molecules. This is one representative motif, what it could look like when it packs. When we dope it with the Meisenheimer complex shown here um, in the middle right of the screen, we see it incorporates itself into the, the uh, packing motif of the polymer itself. Um, and so using computational techniques at a decently rigorous level of theory, um, we were able to identify the positions on the oligomer planar structure that the Lewis base preferred to be from an energetic standpoint. So there's like a, about a two or three nanometer gap between the flat planar um, oligomer and the uh, Lewis, at Lewis base species. Um, it's going to, to reside a little bit above datively bonded to that planar molecule. Um, and we showed that the, uh, what the experimentalists predicted was happening or hypothesized was happening was in fact happening um, via this uh, Meisenheimer complex forming. Um, additionally, we showed that the strength or the amount of energy with which it took to pull an electron off this type of system um, was less than um, energy required for the system, which leads to improved electron activity and therefore better conductivity, um, better thermoelectric performance, which is good, which is what we're aiming for, we're aiming for higher efficiency, higher power factor, 
better materials, right? And these are my, this is my advisor, Dr. Paulette Clancy. This is our collaborators on the right here if you care to read more. And here's my email on the bottom right for if you'd like to contact me about this. So I wanna thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. I hope any of that made sense, but it's very exciting to be um, doing this type of research. So thank you.